What do you do when an officer lies through his teeth and tags on false charges against you? What do you do when your defense attorneys try to pressure you into accepting a plea deal? What do you do when the judge in your case, along with the prosecutor and your own defense attorneys, conspire to have you imprisoned? What you're about to witness is a massive case of deliberate court corruption. Let's go and get a warrant. <laughs> There's probably calling his attorney practically out there. Because he wants it executed. He's not going to come save them all that yet. So we're going to execute the warrant. But he's out there probably waiting on his attorney or something. Could I just know what time the warrant was issued? What time did my attorney leave? You are now watching an ASD Docs investigation. Hey guys, my name is Andre, and in today's video, we're going to be exposing a lot of different people. Some of these people are police officers, while some of these people are of other higher authority positions. Today, we're going to be exposing UPD Officer Jared Cardone, Attorney Heather Chestnut, Attorney Daniel Torrance, Prosecutor Nathaniel Swift, and Judge Catherine Bernards Goodman of the West Jordan Third District Court in Utah. Before I go any further into this investigation, I must reiterate that these are allegations. You are presumed innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. I'll be leaving timestamps for those of you that want to skip the whole backstory of this case. I do recommend that you watch this video in its entirety so that you have complete context of the severity of what is really going on here. With all of that said, let's get started. This is Luis Sanchez. He contacted me on Facebook on July 8th, 2021, asking me for assistance in exposing defense attorneys, a district court judge, a prosecutor, a bailiff, and a court clerk. He assured me that he had tons of evidence to prove everything that he was telling me was true. As you can imagine, I was extremely skeptical. I'd never had a case where this much evidence was presented to me. This case is about corruption in every sense of the word. I want to give a quick shout out to Luis Sanchez's YouTube channel. After all of the lies and deceit and corruption that Luis has endured since 2014, he took matters into his own hands and filed a lawsuit against his own defense attorneys. He's a pro se plaintiff. I know for a fact, Luis has a bright future within this community, and I hope all of you go over to his YouTube channel and let him know ASD Docs sent you. With all of that said, here's a quick word from our sponsor, and then we're going to get right into the investigation. Want to become your own investigator? Then you'll always want to be at the ready. Capture all the action with the dash cam from blackboxmycar.com. You may even get a discount on your car insurance. And with all the savings, the dash cam virtually pays for itself. Got tickets for traffic violations you did not commit? A dash cam can prove that too. Click on my link in the description and you can save 5% off your next dash cam or speak with the awesome team at Black Box My Car to find the best dash cam that fits your needs and budget. Blackboxmycar.com, reliable dash cams, free shipping, friendly dash cam experts. Now, back to the investigation. Mr. Sanchez has always maintained his innocence and demanded a jury trial for the charges that stemmed from an alleged DUI. Countless times he has requested video recordings of his arrest. Officer Jared Cardone from the UPD claimed that his dash camera had been malfunctioning on that night. The remaining recordings taken at the police station were unlawfully deleted by police and other reports were withheld from Mr. Sanchez. Mr. Sanchez's constant demand for a trial and his refusal to pleading guilty allegedly angered his attorneys. 
On March 19, 2018, Luis Sanchez had arrived early to court. He said he spent a few minutes waiting in his car to kill some time before entering the courthouse. Sanchez states he was outside the courtroom doors by 9 a.m. He also claims he attempted to walk inside, but that the courtroom was overcrowded. This was evident from courtroom video recordings. Sanchez says he waited outside the courtroom doors so that it would clear up a little before he attempted to find a seat. He explains he did not go in because he had many times in the past been instructed to wait outside and not block the doors for it being a safety hazard. In 2018, I had a court hearing, a pretrial court hearing, I believe. Court hearings weren't to begin until 9 a.m. I arrive in front of the courtroom doors around a few minutes before 9, for sure. And it was packed, it was overflowing with people, so I couldn't even get inside. So I waited in front of the courtroom doors. They're, they have benches on the side because of the same reason. And I was waiting. I waited for a few minutes until I saw that it cleared up a bit and I decided to go in. Once I went in, I didn't see my attorney, Daniel Torrens, but I saw Heather Chestnut, which was on my case as well. After a few minutes, I walk up to her and I tell her, I ask her if Daniel Torrens is going to be absent as he had been absent the previous court hearing. She tells me that my case had already been called and to just wait until the judge calls my case again. I, at that moment, I, I realized that something was up because I had been in front of the courtroom by nine and I didn't see Daniel Torrance leave. So I started to get really nervous. So I, I made sure to document what time I spoke with Heather Chestnut just in case later on I needed to, I needed that information. and. To my surprise, they had called my case 15 minutes before any court proceeding was to start. They called my case around 8.45 and they, they did it in order to get a, a warrant out for my arrest for failure to appear. Eight forty a.m. Heather Chestnut points at the clock on the wall. Note that court hearings and her client, Mr. Sanchez, are not scheduled to start until nine a.m. Is it time? Eight forty-five. Good morning, Your Honor. Oh, you're ready? Good. 8.45 a.m. Right on cue. Prosecutor Nathaniel Swift walks up to go on record and falsely accuse Mr. Sanchez of frequently missed court hearings and tardiness. Thank you. That's all I'm ready on for now. Thanks. Sanchez. And Your Honor, um, Mr. Torrance is here today. We're ready on uh, Mr. Sanchez. Sanchez. Uh, 82, State of Utah versus Sanchez. <coughs> Excuse me. He's not present, Your Honor. And you don't expect him? Or? Judge Katie Bernards Goodman just asked that very important question because it's only 8.45 a.m. and she's very aware that court proceedings do not start until 9 a.m. I'm sorry? And you're not expecting him to come? Well, I, ex I always expect him, although last time he was not here and it was only after my secretary called him that he remembered to come. So. Court records indicate Mr. Sanchez was present with Heather Chestnut on previous court hearings, which was ironically rescheduled by Judge Bernard Goodman due to Mr. Torrance being absent, not Sanchez. Mr. Sanchez has a history of 
coming in very late. Out of dozens of court hearings, court records show Mr. Sanchez had been late once and missed just one court date. Note, this case has been active for more than five years due to the ineffective assistance from defense attorneys Heather Chestnut and Daniel Torrance. He has missed a few altogether. Uh... So, bench warrant? After prosecutor Nathaniel Swift lied to the court, he then proceeds to ask for a warrant against Mr. Sanchez. All the while, court proceedings are not to start for another 15 minutes. I'd ask for a warrant and, I, you know, what we have the problem for is I, I don't intend on setting this. I don't want to set it for trial until we square away the discovery type issues and stuff, and so he needs to be here for that. All right, we'll set a bench warrant, 15000 cash, commence bond forfeiture. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have this morning. If I could be excused. We're going to take him into custody. <laughs> hey, Steve. At 9.05 a.m., there's an overcrowded courtroom. People are standing between the courtroom doors and waiting outside for seats to become available. At 9.07 a.m., Mr. Sanchez walks in wearing a white collared shirt and gray pants. Bailiff Steve Adams appears to inform Judge Bernard Goodman of his arrival. State of Utah versus Bradford. At 9.17 a.m., Mr. Sanchez approaches Heather Chestnut. She would inform Sanchez that a warrant had been issued for his arrest and instructed him to wait until the judge called his case again. Prosecutor Nathaniel Swift sees Mr. Sanchez speaking to Ms. Chestnut at 9.17 a.m. It's now 10.43 a.m. It takes prosecutor Nathaniel Swift about an hour and a half before he finally decides to inform Judge Bernard Goodman that Mr. Sanchez is waiting between the doors. Now mind you, Mr. Sanchez has been seen in clear view of the judge, the clerks, the bailiff, his attorneys, and the prosecutor for again the past hour and 36 minutes. Mr. Sanchez can now be seen on his phone, unsuccessfully attempting to reach his defense attorney, Daniel Torrance. Sure, I'm the court. Mr. Sanchez is standing in the Was well, that one we already called? Yeah. And issued a warrant because he's always late or not showing up? And we're going to execute the warrant. So we'll see if he comes in here, calls his case. <laughs> There's probably calling his attorney for him to be out there. Yes. He wants it executed. He's not going to come save him all that yet. So we're going to execute the warrant. But he's out there. Probably wait on his attorney or something. <laughs> he's good at what he does. He doesn't ask until he's between him and the door. <laughs>
At 10.47 a.m., the blatant attempt to cover up their tracks begins. They allegedly falsify court records and justify the unlawful arrest. Sometime after 9 o'clock. But this isn't a social event. So maybe we should call it so that we can document what time he came in. Yeah. State of Utah versus Sanchez. Judge Katie Bernards Goodman and Prosecutor Nathaniel Swift go on record to deliberately lie about the time Mr. Sanchez arrived at court. Okay, Mr. Sanchez, I just want to make sure we see you before you go back. Your case was already called this morning. We just saw you arrive about 10 minutes ago, which no, would have no, been no, no, a no. quarter to 11. I've been here since 9.08. Well, you did not come to our courtroom until a quarter to 11. This is the third time you have either missed or been hours late. So we issued a bench warrant for you hours ago. We're going to execute on it this time. I believe we told you last time if you were late, you're going to go into custody. So I spoke with uh, Heather at 9.17. I, okay. I was here earlier. Judge Katie Bernards Goodman ignores Mr. Sanchez's statement and his defense attorney Heather J. Chestnut remains silent. Your Honor, I, I saw the defendant here uh, when I first saw him. I recognized him. I looked at the clock. It was 9.38 is when I saw him here. Uh, I'll note for the record that his attorney is the one that called the case and we've had this conversation at least three times. Could I just know what time the warrant was issued? What time did my attorney leave? That, you can ask your attorney about that, but we didn't issue it until after 9, and you're here way after that. When I created the video, I tried to get some media attention to it. I contacted many local news stations, many local reporters and journalists. Nobody, nobody wanted to cover the case. Everybody refused. And the only thing that did happen was that one of the news stations or reporters that I contacted, they got in contact with the judge and showed them the video that I had posted on YouTube. And based based on that, the the judge recused herself, removed herself from from the case. I didn't get any media attention from it, but at least I got a new a new judge from that. Guys, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more we have yet to talk about. I wanted to give you all as much information in part one as possible without overloading you guys with too much info. I think this investigation is proof at how easy it is to conspire against a common citizen in the court of law. How many times has this happened before? Guys, please, let's hold these people accountable. Share this video, voice your concerns. This needs to be exposed. Stay tuned for part two. This has been an ASD Docs investigation. Thanks for watching. Maybe if you would want to touch on the fact that Heather Chestnut is now the Attorney General's Office new civil rights attorney and how, like, <laughs> she's a civil rights attorney? Yes, for the Attorney General's Office. You can't make this shit up. I'm telling you, man, this is... You can't make this shit up. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> That's 
as soon as she left the what is it called the um, i guess she got a lot of uh, heat from this from co-workers or at least that's what my other attorney told me and so she left the salt lake legal defender association and she moved to the attorney general's office as their new civil rights attorney and that is why i believe the ag's office refused to investigate refused to even acknowledge my complaint (laughs) 